Hello everyone. Welcome to our course Azure Kubernetes Services or AKS Deep Dive, which covers in depth a deep dive for AKS and Kubernetes. This video is part of this course and will cover lesson two in module one, which is understanding application modernization. This video is part of module one, introduction to application modernization and containers. And this is where the video is located in the current module. So let's start. Module one, lesson two, understanding application modernization. This lesson will cover moving from waterfall to the agile. So we will understand what happened when companies moved from the waterfall methodology to the agile and how this reflected on the delivery of software. Then we will understand the challenges of the monolithic application, which is impacted by the Agile methodology. And then we will understand the modernized architecture and team structure. Working with Agile is changing the way we should modernize our architecture and the team structure. And how moving from Agile is impacting the modernized architecture and how we structure our teams. And after that, we will understand the benefit of microservices and modernize the application. And then how we are going to host microservices. What is the best solution or what is the alternatives for hosting microservices? And then understanding the service catalog and discovery when we have a huge bunch of services to more discovering the new services that we keep developing in our application. And at the end, we will understand the microservices and the relation to a shared database. Before we start, let me give you a quick introduction about myself. My name is Mohammed Radwan. I'm a developer technologies MVP and principal DevOps consultant. I have been doing software development for more than 17 years now. Worked on several projects for different enterprise customers across different regions and countries. For more info about me, you can review lesson one in module one. Okay, moving from waterfall to agile. The story begins when companies start moving from waterfall methodology, which has delivery every one year or six months to agile and DevOps, which has delivery in three weeks sprint, for example, or one week or every day, or even sometimes multiple times per day. So when companies moving from this methodology to the Agile, this is changing the way we want to build our software because we can't build the software in the same way that we used in the water because the traditional architecture and component structuring the team, this is why Agile and DevOps is changing the way that we should architecture our software and structuring the team because we can't have this fast delivery if we're still using the same application architecture and team structure. So there is many challenging moving from waterfall to agile methodologies, and I'm not going to cover them, but one of them is the monolithic application. One of the most challenging part of moving from waterfall to agile methodology. And to solve this problem, the solution was is just to break down this monolithic application into small pieces or services, which we call the microservices. In order to understand why we do that, let's understand some comparison between them. So if we look at monolithic application, we will find that it needs long time to rebuild the whole application. It may take hours. But when we look at microservices, it's short time to rebuild one piece. It could be seconds or a very few minutes. Long time to test the whole application. If I have a new feature or bug fix, I need to have a full integration test. This requires a long time to have this test. But when I'm talking about microservices, we just have a short time to test because I only test one piece of the application, which is the piece or the services that I have the new feature or the bug fix. New feature or bug fix deploy the whole application again. I just need to replace this application with a new version and I just need to deploy the whole application again. But when I'm talking about microservices, just to deploy the piece that has a new feature or the bug fix. It increases the conflicts between teamwork because all the team working on the same application. So this increases the conflicts between the working of the team 
but here in the microservices this has reduced the conflict between teamwork and scaling a feature by scaling the whole application if for example if i have an application for university and the registration is really have a huge number of requests and i need to scale that the only way to scale the application is just scaling the whole application but when I'm talking about microservices, I can just scaling the registration services without scaling the rest of the application, which gave me ability to best utilization for the resources and for many other things. So moving to microservices really help us to implementing Agile. And in order to implement that, we moving from focusing on horizontal architecture to focus on vertical architecture instead. So we're moving from architecture team to the feature team. So for example, if we look at the traditional team structure, we can see that it is divided by the layer of the application. So we have the UI, which is developing the, all the component of the application, email, voice, TV, registration, no matter what is the component. And then we have the service oriented team or the API team that developing the API for all the component. And then the same for the data, which is developing all the components. But moving to more agile team, which is vertical architecture of the team, which means that instead of having this horizontal team, we move to a feature team. So we have one component, let's say the email component, and we have one team which is responsible for the UI and the API and the data for all this component. So we start having the feature team that divided the application into multiple features. And this is how we break down the monolithic application into small pieces and with each piece or services or microservices it's responsible for one team to developing that and this gives the team more autonomy for managing the services and developing the feature more frequently and delivering faster to the market so for example if we look at some of the benefit of microservices it's faster app development why because if we look at the monolithic application for example if i want to deploy the application or replicate the application i just need to replicate the whole application but when i look at the microservices i just need to deploy the required services if i want to scale i just scale the services needed only so with microservices, it independent deployments, because again, each services, I can deploy the service independently. And then also it's improves the skill and resources utilization per services, because I only scale the services that require more traffic. And of course, smaller focus team, which means that they can focus on delivering new feature or bug fix more quickly to the market. So developing a new feature for an application. So when customer or management has asked for a new services, the service must be does some new functionality. Service must be its own deployable artifact and must have document API to interface with existing services. And this is how the modernized application give me the ability to develop new feature very quickly to respond to the market. So value for modernized application. So again, agility, because this is support to continuous integration and continuous delivery, because now the continuous integration focus on a small part of the application, which is the services. And then I can have a continuous delivery to in production with my application to the market. It also gave me the time to market, having a scalability and high availability insight and analytics for my services. It also gave me the total cost of ownership because it reduced the cost needed for scaling or managing or hosting the application. Because again, I only scaling or increasing the servers that is needed for only the particular services, which is, has a huge traffic only. So it is best utilization for the cost. And of course, simplifying and standardizing the IT infrastructure and services. So modernized application has huge punch of services like registration services, customer services, order services, and again, many, many services. And the question now is how I am going to host the services. There is many options for hosting the services, but one of the very high potential is to hosting in containers. So the main idea is that each services will go for a container and then 
end up with having huge punch of microservices deployed to many containers. And again, while this is give me the ability to have autonomy for team feature, fast delivery to the market, but it increased the complexity of managing all these container and these services. This is why when I have, for example, a service with 100 microservices, I need to have a service catalog or a service discovery where it just, I register these services. For example, when I have the account services, this will be registered in the register service or the catalog service. A catalog services, a recommendation services, or maybe customer service, or you know any other services. So this will be listed in the registry services where I can understand how much services I have, what is the services I have, and so on. So it is very important when you design and modernize your application to have a service discovery or service catalog metadata for your services. In the ideal world, every services or microservices will using a separate database. But in reality, this is, could be a challenging having all this number of database. So in many cases, the microservices just access a shared database, but in each container will just access only one subset of the database. So another container only access another subset of database and so on. And of course, this container also interacting with each other. So each container is a full self-sufficient except that it use a subset on the shared database. A single database subset can access the only by a dedicated containers. At the end, I would like to thank you for watching this video. If you have any question or inquiry, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you.